everybody, and welcome to this Support Talks event. Good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, depending on the location where you are in the world. So uh, once again, welcome to this Tech Tools Explained series event. My name is Hilda Arteaga, and I am a community manager of the Cisco community and the host of today's events. Today, we're going to talk about uh, how you can use my devices to manage your Cisco assets. Also, I want to mention before we start that the Cisco community is an online forum with over half a million members where you can get answers to your technical questions prior to opening cases with attack. You can answer many questions as well, contribute, uh, make questions to um, place videos, blogs, or documents. And remember that the community can help you to boost your IT career by becoming a top contributor and getting technical community to know more about yourself. So before we start, I would like to share with you just some couple of events that we are going to have in the community related to this session. First of all, we have an Ask Me Anything following this event. This is a forum event. That means that you can make uh, different questions and clarify uh, different inquiries that you have related to My Devices too. And this is going to be available the next Friday, January the 22nd. Uh, Dave and Scott will be helping out to cover all of the questions. So how we use this one? Let's say that you have a question here and we are not able to answer it during this live session either because we have too many questions or perhaps because uh, we need to validate information to give you the right answer. If that is the case, we'll be allocating those questions in this forum event. Or also, let's say that a couple of hours after this event or maybe some days after this event, you just find out that you have a, another question related to my devices, so you just can go to this forum event, place it there, and we'll be helping you out to cover it till January 22nd. All the information that I'm mentioning, the links to access to them, is going to be available in the chat panel, which is located at the right side of your screen, or on the tiny, tiny spheres and, or, or circles that you have if you're on a mobile device. Also, uh, we'd like to invite you to have a look to other support talk events that we have been having. We have like Collaboration Solutions Analyzer, the Tag Connect bot, and the last one that we have is the CLI Analyzer. You can have a look uh, to all the recordings and all the upcoming events as well that are, are coming in future. Remember that all these tools will help you out to save time uh, to do troubleshooting and to manage all your Cisco assets. Well, also we'd like to invite you to become an event top contributor. That means to participate more in the community so you can get not only recognized, but you can also uh, that I want to help others. And what is the way to do that? And something that we would like to, to to invite you to do is just please help us out to read the content or anything that you find on the Cisco community. That's a way not only to encourage people but to participate, but also to let them know that things were helpful for them. The way to do this is very easy. Uh, we have different options like uh, the helpful boat. So if you find something that really gives you a hand and you find it valuable, in any document, video, or blog, or for instance, in the presentation of, of today's event, you just give it a helpful vote and click on the tiny star. If someone give you an answer and the, the answer was correct, you can click on accept a solution. That also will help us out in future when someone has a, a similar inquiry, they find the accepted solution and they find things quicker and faster. And well, just to get started, I would like to introduce you to the Cisco community experts and the question manager that's helping us out today. I will start with Dave Dubé. Uh, I apologize, I'm trying to pronounce his name properly. He's a technical leader and product owner in the Cisco Customer Experience Organization. He currently works on defining product requirements for the development of multiple customer and partner-facing platforms and web applications. Dave has been at Cisco for over 20 years, actually two decades, and has worked in a wide variety of areas from designing several ACAs, uh, within mid-range routing portfolio to product management within Cisco CX organization. They host a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from the Virginia Polytechnic Institute, a master's degree in electronic engineering from the North Carolina State University, and an MBA from the Darren Graduate School of Business at the University of Virginia. So hi, Dave, and welcome to this event. Thank you so much for being with us today. Hello. Glad to be here. Great. And we also have a Scott. A Scott is a software technical leader in the Cisco Customer Experience Organization. He currently works on the development of multiple platforms and web applications that deliver value to our customers and partners. Scott has been in Cisco for over two decades as well, and he has worked in a different areas of network management, voice technology, uh, and also Cisco services. Scott's 
<coughs> apologize, Scott was the original architect and developer of the Cisco CLI Analyzer product, and he holds a bachelor's degree in computer engineering and a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from the West Virginia University. Hi, Scott. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, everyone. Glad to be here. Awesome. Well, uh, also for all of you who would like to have a deeper look to to the slides of this event, you can find it on the Cisco community. Remember, if you find it valuable, you can give up help for both. The link will be appearing on the chat as well, so you can access there. Also, uh, remember that in this session, you can meet all, submit all your questions related to my devices. Uh, Scott will be helping out in the meantime that Dave is presenting. So please use the, the Q&A panel it's located on your right side or in the tiny circles if you're on a mobile phone. That helps us all to manage the questions better. And please uh, try to use the chat panel just for all the questions or logistics, like I have no audio, I want to contact someone. And that helps us out just to also cover your questions. And well, that is everything from my side today. I hope you learned a lot from this tool. So I'm going to pass uh, the microphone, the presenter's ball to Dave so he can introduce us to my devices. Hello, everyone. My name is Dave Dubay, uh, product owner for my devices. And on the Q&A panel, as, as I mentioned, Scott Salsgaver, who is the, the original developer and architect for, for my devices as well. So he's there to correct everything that I incorrectly say in this presentation. Thank you, Scott. Um, so we have an agenda today. We're going to do a brief overview of my devices, talk about some of the features, and interspersed within there, there's going to be some tips, some tips and tricks to help you along the way. Um, we'll do a demo, and then if there's time at the end, we'll do a question and answer session as well. But first, we have a polling question. We want to get a sense of uh, people's experience with my devices. So uh, the polling question should pop up on the right. I just got a pop up window. So have you ever heard of or used Cisco My Devices before? I think there's a minute or so for folks to put in an answer. So you choose A if you've never heard of it. We won't. We won't mind. Uh, if you've heard of it but just never used it, uh, choose option B, C, if, I've, if you've used it occasionally, and D if you're a frequent user. And depending upon your selection, that'll kind of guide a little bit of how much time we spend in slides versus demo and all that good stuff. So hopefully, it looks like we've got about 25 seconds or so. Ah, okay, so uh, what it looks like, about 29% of the folks have never heard of it. 12% uh, they've heard of it and never used it, so a little over 40% or so. 22% uh, have used occasionally and 6% frequent users. So hopefully we'll find some tips and tricks for the, the frequent users and uh, we'll help those who have never used it before. So good, that gets a good sense of where folks are. Let me get back to the presentation. So what is My Devices? My Devices, it's a, it's a lightweight asset management utility. Uh, it's a user curated utility. So when you first go to my devices, you'll it may be a little jarring because there'll be no devices in your collection. So uh, you'll go in and actually add serial numbers one at a time or through some other mechanisms. But when you supply the serial numbers, the tool in turn comes back with a host of information, whether it's the product ID of the device, the category and model in which it's related to, product release information, end of sale, end of support dates that are associated with those devices. Uh, warranty information when it expires, and then if the device is covered under contract, it will expose uh, coverage information. So when the support coverage may may end, for instance, the contract number associated with the device. Um, if you supply the or add software that's running on the the particular device, we'll walk through that in the demo. Um, we'll compare what you entered with what's the recommended and latest version of the software. Um, the location where the product's installed, if we know that, and then any support cases related to the covered devices uh, will expose as well. And it's all kind of contained within one helpful tool. So you may ask, why would we create yet another asset management utility? That's a great question. Um, so briefly, back around 2012, Scott and I both were at Cisco Live, or on the World of Solutions floor. We were demoing a few of the tools that we had kind of came up with. Uh, Cisco Tech Support mobile app, if you've tried that, uh, device coverage checker, if you use that tool, um, support case manager, we had revamped as well. Um, but during those discussions, we started asking folks about how they go about managing their assets. And what we found were uh, there were a number of folks who simply managed their assets by having a spreadsheet with a bunch of serial numbers on it, and then it was a bit of a bear to go off and hunt down 
things like end of life, end of sale information, uh, when coverage ends or opens. And so as we started talking to them, we, we figured that would probably be a little bit of a pain and we might be able to help them. Uh, also, we found that uh, some folks were hesitant about using collectors within their network to kind of scrape the information from each of the devices. Some folks had air gap networks. It wasn't uh, applicable or, or, or plausible for them to add collectors into the network. Uh, others had lab networks that they didn't want to put a collector in there or didn't want to put devices on contracts. So what do you do then? And ultimately, um, we found from a number of folks that there were some folks that would be focused on the security side. So maybe they're managing other firewalls. There's other folks that were managing the collaboration, unified communication side. And there might be some other folks uh, who are more interested about the route switch, the core uh, networking functionality. So each person kind of wanted to tweak or have their own customized view. And so we got to think about how we could actually make that a little bit better. And we came up with my devices. So starting out, as I mentioned, you have zero devices in your collection, which can be a little bit jarring. Um, everybody, actually, let me back up a little bit. Uh, some may wonder whether or not uh, you need to have uh, a service contract in order to leverage my devices. The answer is no. So anybody can actually use my devices out of the box. Uh, if you do have a support contract, at least one device on a support contract associated with your profile, you get some extra features. So for instance, everybody, regardless if you have a contract or not, they can manually add in serial numbers at a time. Uh, if you don't have a service contract, the manual entry path, you're limited to 100 serial numbers a day. Uh, if you have a service contract, you can import information through a, a CSV file, for instance. And then if you're an end customer, if you have at least one device that's covered under a contract and you know what that serial number is, you can use that to kind of uniquify that device to you and your association to your contracts. And then we can go look at all the contracts associated with your profile, find all the devices that match to you, and then start importing them for you. So there's various ways that you can actually uh, populate your collection uh, quickly, and we'll go through that. Briefly, the, the last piece that I talked about, the importing from contract, that is limited to end customers. So partners, uh, they have a view of the entirety of contracts, and sometimes you can have multiple customers on a given contract. So as a result, um, that one piece, that importing from contract, is excluded from that. And then it's important to note, too, that uh, right now, virtual devices or software packs, they're not supported in my devices, so you can't import those, unfortunately. And as I mentioned, users who don't have any contracts, they're, they're limited to 100 devices a day that you can actually add into your collection. So it's a little bit of a pain, but uh, still somewhat manageable for folks. After you've add, started adding some devices, one of the tabs within my devices is the device listing view. So from within here, you have a couple of pre-canned filters that you can choose from. So you can select various categories or by coverage type. Um, and we'll I'll walk through that in the demo as well. Uh, there's different ways that you can actually display the information. So whether it's a card view, which is what we're showing here in this particular screen, um, or a, a table view. So however you like to view information, you can kind of click and choose and uh, tailor it to what you need. Um, and in this particular scenario, this, this version that we're showing here in the screenshot, You'll notice under coverage, hopefully you can see my mouse, but in the filter section uh, by coverage, there is a the second option there it says unassociated contracts. And we'll talk about this in the demo, but what that means is there are two devices that I've imported in this particular collection that are, are covered, but they're associated to a contract that's not on my user profile. So that can kind of clue you in on uh, something that you might need to go and figure out what's going on and figure out what those serial numbers are. You have to talk to your account manager or your, your partner that help you out. Figure out what the, that contract is and then get that contract associated with your profile. Because once you do that, then you start getting more information related to those particular devices. Next, when you drill into or, or dig into uh, a particular device, um, just by supplying that serial number, you'll get links to documentation, software downloads, the product ID, uh, serial number, the release date, end of sale and support information. This particular device is under contract and it is associated with my profile. So you can see that green little checkbox there under contract uh, and it tells you if, if it's covered and how long it's covered and the, the contract number associated with it and the type of uh, coverage. 
Now, if it was a scenario where it was covered, but not that contract was not associated with my profile, uh, it would still say it's covered. We just wouldn't expose that contract number or the type or when it actually expired. So again, that's another reason to try and get that uh, contract associated to your profile. And then uh, below this information, we'll walk through this in the demo, but you'll see additional information. If it is covered under contract associated to your profile, you'll see um, things like the, the uh, life cycle, product life cycle, end of sale, end of support uh, information, as well as the install location information as well. And then within this particular view, uh, if it's covered, you have the ability to go in and uh, edit some device information so you can add additional tags if, you, there's a, if you feel that there's a better way to filter your collection, you can add tags to help you filter that information. Um, if you find that the coverage information that's displayed might not be correct, you can click on the little refresh button and that'll make a call out to our back end and pull the latest information. And um, that's actually another thing I wanted to mention too. So when we're exposing the coverage end date, that coverage information is related to the current active contract. So if you've actually gone and uh, maybe renewed the contract and it's been signed and paid, it just hasn't kicked in yet, that coverage information will still reflect back to the active contract. And then when time moves forward and they actually shift into that new coverage period, then that updated date will, will uh, appear automatically. So. Um, don't be alarmed if, if the date doesn't match your expectation from that perspective if you just re-signed a contract. Um, it'll, it'll get automatically updated for you in the back end. And then if it's covered, um, you can go in, you can actually open a support case uh, from, from, this, uh, from this view as well instead of having to go to uh, support case manager. And then likewise, you can go and delete the device from your collection. As I mentioned, you can open a support case. So in this scenario, we know the serial number, we know it's associated to your contract and that contract associated with your profile. So there's a few steps that we can kind of skip through that you would normally have to run in the support case manager. So here all you would have to supply is the technology, the sub-technology, the problem code, uh, a quick title and a description, and you're off and running. You can open that case and it'll, it'll get routed to a tech engineer as quickly as possible. Once you've populated your collection, you can uh, uh, build some reports uh, that will give you a little bit more information about your collection. So there's three reports that are available. There's one for coverage. So you can see uh, if any devices, each one of these rings are sort of a filtered view of the collection. So there's 435 devices that have uh, moved past uh, uh, contract renewal, so they're no longer covered. Uh, there's 441 in this particular scenario that are coming up within the next 30 days that are expiring. So Pretty quickly, if, if that's important to you, and depending upon your, your purchasing finance life cycle, um, you can uh, drill into each one of these rings by clicking on any one of the, the numbers. You can get a device listing specific to that time frame um, and uh, export that information to an Excel spreadsheet, uh, tweak it a little bit, send it off to your finance folks, uh, let them know where you want to get uh, uh, renewed and go down that path. If there happens to be a device that is going to expire within the next 180 days or has recently expired within the last 180 days and those devices haven't passed that end of service contract renewal date, there'll be a little button that will pop up here that you can click on. And there's a brief little form. Um, essentially what you're doing is requesting information. Maybe you want a quote uh, on what it would take to actually renew those service contracts if you want to go down that path. So from there, you can select which contracts you're curious about. Uh, you fill out the form, you submit it in, it goes to a renewal agent. They'll do some research, find out who your partner is. They'll marry that information back and send it to you. And then before you contact the partner, you can then you know, tweak that list, right? So it, it, we're not assuming that you want everything on there, but we're going to provide you as much information that you want, and it's up to you to uh, decide uh, what you want to proceed forward with. So we don't, try not to make any assumptions there as well. And that's what actually this form, this is what the form actually looks like. Um, we pre-populate a, a few things that are in there, but again, uh, within the next 180 days of contract expiration or has already expired, um, that, that's that window and that information gets sent to the renewal agent. There's also a product lifecycle and software report. You can pick um, what event you're curious about, whether it's last day of support, end of sale, end of service renewal, 
as you select each one of these, the numbers and the rings are going to change accordingly to map into that filtered view. And from there, you can click on any one of the rings or click on any one of the, uh, like for instance, if I was curious about these two devices that are expiring in the next 12 months for this contract, I can click on the two and I, I get that view. If I've gone in and actually edited the individual devices to indicate what software is running on those devices, then uh, we'll populate a software version report. So here you can see a scenario where the ASA 5505 that we have, it's running the, the latest uh, recommended software. So that's good, you get a green check mark. Um, the uh, device above, the iOS router that we have up above, um, unfortunately that is not at the latest version. So we indicate that uh, and then we will make a link to the suggested version depending upon the train that's available as well as the latest versions of each. So you can kind of click on each one of those, get more information about the software that's available and download it if you need to. And then once you've built the collection, you may have gone to the point where you want to share it with your colleagues. So when you do that, there's a sharing tab off to the, the far right. Um, if you have the CCO ID or the Cisco user ID, you can enter that in there. So here, Scott, I was on the Q&A panel, uh, I've entered his information. And then before submitting or creating the share, I can indicate whether or not I want him to be a guest. So as a guest, he can view the information, but he can't add devices or delete devices. If I made him a member, he could then add devices and delete devices and augment them as well. So depending on how much control you want your uh, users to have, you can uh, limit uh, their options. And then in terms of tips, so some things that we found out, uh, oftentimes we uh, will hear, we've got some feedback coming in, people will say that they have a device that's covered under a particular contract, it's not associated with their profile. How do they go about fixing that? And the easiest, quickest way to do that, if you go to cisco.com, go to the, the website, and if you, off to the upper right, you'll see uh, an icon that indicates you or your, your profile after you've logged in. If you click on the Manage Profile button, it takes you to um, the, the Profile Management Utility, and then there's a tab for Access Management off to the right, and that will take you to another pop-up screen. You'll see a list of all your current contracts at that point, and if you don't see a contract that should be there, you can click on that Add Access button, and it will go down through that process of getting that contract added to your profile. So that's the quickest and fastest way to, to get there. Um, if, for instance, you've shared, or if you had a colleague who sh shared a collection with you and that colleague either moves into a new role or leaves the company and you want to uh, get access to owning that particular share, in that share tab, uh, there'll be an option. If you are a member or a guest, you can request ownership of that. And what that does is it sends a note to our support team and we validate with the original owner and yourself to make sure that everybody is uh, cognizant of the, the transfer that would occur. And if everybody agrees, get a good thumbs up, uh, we'll transfer that share collection to the new user as well. And then lastly, if you need help with my devices, uh, there's a couple things you can do. Um, at the end of the day, you can always call TAC and say, you know, if you have an issue with my devices, you, you could go that route. But the quickest, easiest way to get help, uh, if you have a question about the tool or something's not appearing as you would expect it to be, uh, off to the, just to the right of your uh, username, user ID, there's a little bullhorn icon. Um, we use it for folks who want to send feedback, but you can also use it for asking a question. So if you have an issue, put in a question, submit it, and it's going to go to our support team. We've got a couple of folks that are there that'll, that'll help you out and monitor the alias on a regular basis. Um, one thing to note, though, they, they do not have experience on the complete entirety of the Cisco portfolio of devices, the, all the 8,000 or so devices that are out there. So uh, if you have a question about uh, configuring a device or troubleshooting an issue, TAC will probably be your, your best bet. And then if you don't have a service contract, reach out to the Cisco support communities. There are a lot of great folks that are on the support communities that are there to, to help you and guide you uh, and resolve some things. But our, our support folks just aren't trained across the entirety of the portfolio of Cisco products, unfortunately. Um, and then lastly, off to the far right, there's a little question mark icon. You can use that to access the My Devices help guide. So trying to limit the, the number of slides we have here, just doing a quick time check. I think we're in pretty good shape. Um, so we'll start the next poll. In terms of what we've talked about thus far, I'm curious about 
you know, what feature uh, would be most useful in a day-to-day job, whether it's general asset management, generating those reports, coverage, end-of-life information, uh, requesting coverage renewal information as well, or opening and managing support cases all from within the devices. And the answer to this question will kind of help guide the demo as well. So I think we are just there. Let me go see if I got the... You should be able to see the results, Dave, and then continue the presentation and then moving forward to the demo. Yeah, so it looks like about 30% roughly said general asset management. About 40% said the asset report, so we'll spend a little bit of time there. Uh, requesting coverage renewal information, about 8%, so won't spend as much time there. Uh, and then 20% of the support cases opening. So it's good. So uh, it sounds like a little bit more on the asset management piece. And so with that, I'm going to uh, – oh, sorry. I'm going to switch to the demo. Let me just hide PowerPoint, move some stuff around, and we're going to be off and running. So here we are in my devices. Um, we're on the summary tab. We're starting from scratch. So I, I promised I, um, we're going to build this from, from the get-go or build a collection from the get-go. And so what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start adding a few devices manually. I've got a little cheat sheet. I'm going to add three devices real quickly. Uh, we'll go. We'll put a. Some folks for the device name, oftentimes they'll use the the host name of the device, but for speed um, reasons, if you will, or just use the serial number as the device name. But it, the device name can be anything. The serial number you need that to be the actual serial number. So we'll go and add that device, and you'll see that popped up in total devices. So we're going to add another device. And while that's adding, we're going to grab a third one as well. All right. So before moving on to the devices tab, you'll notice on the screen or the summary screen, um, you'll notice there was already a couple cases that were highlighted here. So within this particular contract that I have, um, the tool I'd look to see based on my login ID if I had any cases that were open. So they'll, they'll show up here in the um, in the summary tab. They'll also be in the cases tab as well. And some of the activities, so you'll notice each one of those devices that I added, they show up under the activities tab as well. And we can see we've got two routers and we've got one security-related device. Um, we can tweak that a little bit. But uh, one thing to show, so here we've got a scenario where we've got one device that's not covered, which is fine. We have another device that is covered, but it's associated with a contract that is not on my profile. So um, I would need to want to uh, resolve that if I want to get additional information. And then here's a device that is under contract. And each one of these are filtered views. So if you click on any one of those, it'll drive you into that particular device view. So it brought us into the device list. It automatically checked the checkbox for that particular contract. If we wanted to, we could filter out that list, so we, now we see all three devices. And then I mentioned before, if you like the tile view, that's great. So you can see some of the options here. You can edit the device by clicking on the little pencil icon. If we wanted to remove the device, we could do that by deleting the device with the trash can. And then here's the one device that's covered. And you'll notice there's a little suitcase that's there. We can open a support contract, and we'll do that in a second. Um, I'm going to drive into the, the device that is covered. So it is covered. It's on a contract. We can see how long it's covered, the number, and where it is. Here's the install ad information that we have associated with that particular device. And if you see that that uh, information is wrong, you can go ahead and click on the request change, and it's going to open up uh, an email uh, with some information about the particular device. Uh, you can augment the, the email before sending it, but once you send it, it will go to uh, some folks internally in the Cisco and they'll help with the correction of uh, the correction of that location information. Let me just get out of mail, so that's uh, available as well for you. You can add notes to the particular device if you wanted to. So if you wanted to mention that this was in uh, uh, in addition to the location on the map, you may say, well, it's in row 10, uh, rack 13, 12, shelf. For, right? So if you wanted more specific information, you can add notes to that, and that'll carry along with you um, and carry along with the, the, the collection as well. Then if we scroll down a little bit more, we see some of the milestones that are associated with this particular device. And 
uh, we'll notice here this little gray bar that's today, that vertical gray bar is today. Uh, and you can see the uh, contract end is coming up pretty soon. Uh, unfortunately, that end of software or end of service renewal is in the past, so I can't renew this device. Um, so you can kind of use this as a guide as to uh, what's coming down the pipe. I'm going to get back to the device list. So load those three devices. Uh, let's go look at, I know the, the security device is the one that is covered, but it's not associated with a contract. So you can see we, we do indicate that it's covered, uh, but the number and the type is unavailable. The location is unav unavailable because, again, we can't, we're not sure if it belongs to you or not until we get that contract associated with your profile. So we, we obscure that information, uh, but it's still available. Uh, and then lastly, we'll go to the one, the last device. So let's say you had a whole network full of uncovered devices. That's totally fine. Uh, we'll see what that looks like. So it's not covered. Uh, so that's fine. You can see the warranty information uh, about the particular device, uh, the PID and the end of sale and support information. You still get the milestones associated with it, so that's kind of nice. And then uh, if you wanted to, you can uh, click on the documentation and software downloads, and so that'll open up the product page associated with that particular device. So you can get the documentation, the downloads, uh, any community discussions that have been going on related to that particular device, you can get that from, from here as well. Um, any specs. And then if that device is ad actually added in your collection, um, you'll notice it'll pop up here in my devices. So if you kind of come into this page, not through to my devices, but through Google or what have you, um, that'll, that'll come up and be highlighted as well. All right. So we've added some devices manually, one by one. Um, let's go ahead and try that contract import method. So I'm going to go ahead and click the add button. And we're going to do an import from contract. I'm going to click next. I'm going to find that one device that we had. That's the first one that I know is covered. And it's on a contract tied to my profile. So I'm going to select that one. And we're going to check information about that particular device and uniqueify information about that device and the contracts, their association to me. So in that process, it found two contracts that were related to my profile, where we have devices that are related to our site. Uh, and those are automatically checked. You can uncheck one of those or not. You can choose to include any sub-chassis items, whether it's line cards, memory modules, or power supplies. So let's go ahead and click that. And then if you want to include phones, I'll just go ahead and check it because there's not many. Um, we, can, we can do that as well. We'll click Next. And it just makes sure there's some legalese here to say that you know, we're, we know that we're going to go off and pull some information for you based on what we supplied. And we're going to go ahead and import that. Now, this could take a, a little bit of a while. If you have a big contract with thousands of devices, that'd be a time to go off and have a coffee break, um, maybe grab lunch or so. Um, here is about 80 or so, 90 devices. Uh, that import process is going to be moving. We'll see that uh, coming through. Uh, and it looks like it's going to come up pretty quick, so I'm just going to talk a little bit more. And it's complete. Cool. So now we'll get some information about that import process. So we've processed two contracts, we've added 87 devices, and we updated one of the devices. Uh, so that's kind of handy to have. Again, you can uh, go to the coverage area. We can. If we wanted to zoom in on that unassociated contract one, uh, we could do that or unselect that filter. The search mechanism here, if you uh, wanted to go in and um, uh, actually let's do something real quick. Let's say we wanted to tag. So we didn't like these labels for whatever reason. We wanted to select, if you click on the little check mark, we can select multiple items. And then we can actually add a tag to that. And so I'm just going to pick a random Apple tag, what have you. And we're going to add that in there. Um, and you can add as many tags as you want, but those tags will help you filter uh, that content. This might not be super helpful since it was just a replication of that particular contract. But if you don't know contract numbers off the top of your head, like most people, um, that's no problem. You can, you can add those tags to something that matters to you and is meaningful to you. So that information should get added to each one of those devices. It could take a little bit. And 
you know, a little bit longer than I had expected. So I'm going to cancel out of this because it seems like it's got hung up a little bit. Uh, let's see. Let's unselect all of those. And we are going to go into what is this particular device? If it didn't get added in there, yep, I'd see it didn't get added. Let me just go ahead and then add that tag to this particular device. We'll save that. All right, so I'd save that information. And so all of a sudden you'll see under this filter, we have one device that has that tag. So if you wanted to tag it based on collection of devices, maybe collaboration devices, or maybe a site or a building, you could do that by adding the tags. Um, and you can go through that way. So we've added devices manually by one by one. We've added devices by contract. Um, the other option, let me just clear all the filters so we can get the full list. If you have devices that are not covered, that import by contract does not help you at all. Um, so let's, as this is loading the list, we're going to go ahead and import from CSV. And if you don't have a template, there's a little link here to download the template. And I'm going to show you my cheat sheet off the left here is actually a copy of that template with some information involved in there. Um, I'm going to click Next. And so here, the two mandatory fields that you need to have filled out is the serial number column and the device column. There's some optional columns or information that you can add as well. So if you want to add a tag to particular devices, you can do that. Um, you can add uh, notes associated with particular devices or add the software version if you have to remember them off the top of your head. One thing to note, if you manually added a tag for a particular device, if you remember, on this device here, this is the one that we added that Apple tag in there. When we import this CSV file, because the tag column is populated, it's going to uh, write over that tag that I manually put in there. So uh, once you've gotten your collection to the point that you want it, um, one thing that's handy is to export that information. We'll do that in a moment once we've loaded these in here. Save that off, and then you can manipulate that, that um, spreadsheet from that point. So I'm going to select the device. Here's that CSV file. So this would be the handy way if you have a lab network, you know, hundreds of devices, you can use that CSV file import method to get those devices in there. And you can see up here it's processing that list. One thing to note, this, this CSV file import process, you're limited to a thousand devices per upload. It doesn't mean that you're limited to only a thousand a day. It just means that you can only process a thousand at a time. Um, so if you had a CSV file that had a thousand and ten, it's going to leave off the last ten. So that may be one reason if you uh, uploaded a, a file and you didn't see it, um, you didn't see the device you were wondering it was. If it's in that last ten serial numbers, it just didn't get uh, pulled in. So that's one thing to check if you didn't import everything that you expected it. Also, here we'll identify any devices that we couldn't add. So if you have no uh, uh, recollection, if our backend systems have, you know, we, we've got a database that has over a billion serial numbers that, are, that has gone through manufacturing and whatnot, and if we have no recollection of that particular device, then it's not going to get added in there. Um, and so we'll highlight that. And so that's, you know, maybe there's a typo or, um, Maybe it's associated with a, a new acquisition that just hasn't gotten moved to our manufacturing database. That could be another reason why it can get reported. So at this point, uh, we've got a collection. We've added devices manually. We've added devices by contract. And then we added it by a CSV file. Now, um, if you can go in and you'll, you'll notice that I mentioned that tag, that one device that we added, that Apple tag. Again, because we had that field populated, it overwrote that tag. So it was blank, it wouldn't have overwritten. It would just, whatever was there would have stayed there. Um, so it's one thing to note. Uh, but now that's, that's gone and the, the tags are here. Um, you can, if you wanted to, you can select, uh, do multi, multiple filtering, if you will. So here we've got 85 devices that are on this particular contract. It's going to load that. And then from here, you can refine that filtered list based on any attribute related to that particular, or most of the attributes that are related to that. So uh, if you have a partial serial number, so WZP, it's going to uh, eliminate all the ones that don't begin with the WZP. Um, 
Do you have site information? You can add that in there, or as much as you know, like the city, for instance, you can add that in there, and it will refine that list for you. Uh, and then once you've got that filtered list, you can export those devices to the CSV file. Now, what I'm going to do for the time being, I'm going to clear all the filters so we have the entire list of devices, uh, and I'm going to eliminate the search. So it actually pulls up all the devices. And I want you to see what that export looks like. So I'm going to do a default export. Now, if you had thousands and thousands of devices, it would export all that information into one CSV file. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and click that. And I'm going to open it with Excel. And so here, you know, if I just supply these two columns, columns A and B, the resulting information, you've got that category, column filled out, the model name, the PID. If there's any end of whatever, end of life information, we'll populate uh, that information as well uh, in each of the rows, the warranty type, uh, the, when the warranty expires, if it's covered or not, the contract associated with it. So a, a fair amount of information related to those devices or where it's located. Um, we'll scroll down so it's quite handy to have. And from this point, you can slice and dice in Excel uh, to, to meet your needs. Or if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to share this list with a colleague, what you can always do is uh, copy and paste this device list, create a CSV file, and give it to your colleague. Or if you wanted to, you can go into the notes and actually augment the notes. And then you can import this file back into my devices, and it would take those individual notes that, that show up as well. So that becomes kind of a handy way to do it. So once you've gotten your collection to where you, you want it, you like it, it's a good place to save it off, I would export the entire list and save it off. So that way, if, for instance, you delete a device by accident, um, the only way you're going to know you know what that device was is to go back to your original list. And that, that is one point to, to make. When you do do a delete, so if I come back into uh, the tool, and if I were to select everything, and I deleted all the devices, it's it's not a soft delete. It, it wipes everything out. It's it's gone. So that's why the, that export piece is handy to have. Um, so we've talked about adding devices manually, did the CSV import, did it by contract. Um, Let's see if we can find that device real quickly that had, so here is that device that we know it's covered. We can click on that little suitcase. I want to fix my problem, so iOS architecture. Maybe I have a licensing issue. And hold up. Oh, and then we just fill in the title, sample. And there we go, pick licensing here. So this is all the information that you need. You can submit it in case we get open. Uh, so that's kind of handy to have. If we go to the cases tab, it'll pull up all the cases that uh, I've created associated to, to my particular contract. And you can control it uh, or filter it by severity. So network is down would be the equivalent of an S1. Answer my question will be an S4. So you can filter the list that way and we'll reload the particular cases. Um, if I want to know the ones that are open, you can just select, um, select that filter option. And uh, when going into a particular case, you can upload a file to that particular case if you want to do that or uh, add a note as well. So let me just drill into this particular case. Let me just do a quick time check. All right, so I'm gonna, I'll go to reports here momentarily real quick. I'll try to wrap this up. So you'll see real quickly, you get some information about the particular case. Uh, you can read the case notes. You, again, you can add notes, uh, attach a file. Uh, or if you wanted to add a tracking, if you had an internal tracking number that you wanted to associate with the particular case, you can actually add that in there as well. So I know people I mentioned reports, that was handy for them to, uh, to want to look at. So here, contract renewal, you see that there's one device that's coming up uh, for, for renewal, or it's going to fall off contract in 31 to 90 days. Now, you know that request renewal information button, it's not appearing. So why is that? So we're going to go ahead and click that ring and drill into that particular device. We'll go back to reports in a moment. Uh, it's going to load that particular device. And in this particular scenario, if we scroll, we have 
So the bottom, that's that device, that, that end of service contract renewal, it happened in the past, so we can't renew it. That's why that, that little button doesn't, doesn't appear. So sometimes that trips me up all the time, so I just want to point that out. Uh, each one of these rings is a filter, so zero is not very helpful, uh, but if you click on any of the numbers, it'll take you over to that specific view of those devices. Again, over here, these are all clickable. Uh, we can select different reports if we want to look at product lifecycle. So we have uh, nine devices that are uh, beyond last day of support. We can look at what those are, see the ones that are end of sale. Uh, 20 have gone beyond that. Uh, there's 101 devices that haven't been allowed. So you can kind of go through and walk through each one of the product lifecycle reports. And again, if you click on the ring, it'll pull up a list of those particular devices. And then the last one, if you remember from my cheat sheet here, that CSV file that I added, I added two software versions related to that. Um, so if we go to the software version report, so here it shows that one particular device at ASA. Um, so that particular device is no longer, so they must have just recently updated uh, their list of available um, software. So that's why um, that's not showing the suggested, um, not sure why the latest isn't populated, but we can kind of drill into that later. And then here's the information about this particular device. So this is what we're currently running here. These are the suggested uh, versions. This comes from the BU, the product team themselves. So we can either upgrade or at least click on any one of those uh, to learn more information about that particular version. And it takes you straight to software downloads. Uh, so you can download that, that or look at the, the release notes related to that particular version just to see what, what you might be getting yourself into. So that's reports, we've gone on through cases, uh, activities, and now we've got about 10 minutes left. So these are all the things that we've done in the past. Uh, we've imported some devices, we failed to actually update one particular device. So you can kind of get a view there. And then the share, so we don't have, I don't have a share here at the moment, but again, if I enter in the user ID of the user, um, let's see. Oh. Actually, this is a good point. Uh, I forgot about this piece. So the user account that I'm logged in as, uh, our test account, actually has a public email address tied to that particular account. Uh, and so for security reasons, um, we, we limit this to make sure that um, you know, if you have a Hotmail account or Gmail account or uh, Yahoo email account, um, we, we limit the ability to share a collection uh, with folks who also have a, a public email address. So if you happen to be at a company, uh, just randomly picking one, Walmart, and you know, your email domain on your profile is dave at walmart.com, and I wanted to share it with scott at walmart.com, you can do that, and you can choose if it's a guest or a member and, and add them accordingly. And then lastly, last piece of information, that help thing that I mentioned. So you can give us some feedback, one star if we really need to do some work here, Five stars, you're kind of happy, but uh, have a question. And then here you can ask your question. So, uh, sample question, please. More. So, Sachin is actually one of our support engineers. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and submit that, and that's going to go off in the, the, the ether, if you will, go into our uh, email aliases. And either myself, I get those emails, or our support team will see them, and, and one of us will get in contact with you fairly quickly. So with that, we've kind of done a quick demo as a quick drive-by. Um, if you have other questions about other capabilities, again, that little icon off to the right, the help guide, you can pull up the user guide, you might find some other pieces there. Or again, if you have questions, just by all means, feel free to ask us, we're we'll here to help uh, and get you into them as quickly as we can. All right, so that will culminate the demo. I'll kind of pass it back to you, Hilda, if uh, that's all right. And we'll stop so much, Dave. Yep. All right. So thank you so much, Dave, and thank you so much, Scott, for helping out to cover uh, the questions. We have a couple of them from the audience. So uh, I'm going to make one of those ones. So it says, is it possible to share devices with any user with a Cisco ID? or only users from my same company um, that are associated with the same contracts can, are the ones with, 
which I can share with. So you can share your collection with anybody who has this if the email domain that's tied to the profile of the person you want to share with. Um, if it's the same company name, then you can share it with that person. So anybody within your company, uh, you can do that. Um, and keep in mind, when you do that share, there will be a, uh, uh, an email that will go out and just to make sure that it's uh, so I can happy you with, with getting that share. So hopefully that answers that question. And, Thank and you. to add on to that, mm -hmm. uh, I was going to say, and to add on to that, uh, my device is, was built with security as one of the main tenants of it, you know, and as, as we've seen with other security hacks and things that have happened in the past, we wanted to protect everyone's security. So things like that kind of limit, you see the Cisco ID that you're sharing with must be from the same company. Um, and again, that's to make sure you didn't accidentally type in something incorrectly. Another thing around security, what you saw during the contract import, Dave had to provide a serial number. And you may be wondering, well, why did I have to provide a serial number? Well, we wanted to close that loop. Uh, basically, just the fact that you're logged in and associated to a contract doesn't necessarily mean that you should, in theory, see that data. So we wanted to have you at least provide a serial number as a final check so we could close that circle of your ID, contract, and a known serial number because maybe someone walked up to your machine and started wanting to do a contract import, but they didn't know of any serial numbers. So it was a way to, to prove that you were hopefully who you thought uh, we think you are. And, and again, that was all based on the security of the product. And then to add one more thing onto that as well, um, if you're wondering, you know, if off the top of your head you're not sure what serial numbers are covered or what, uh, one of the easiest ways to do that is to go into Support Case Manager. If you've ever opened a support case, you can just go into one of those open cases or prior closed cases, find that serial number associated to that case that you created, and that should work for you pretty relatively quickly. Sort of Thank you very much, Dave and Scott. And I have another question. Someone asked this one on the on, on the Q and A, but I think it's important just to to remark this one is. Do I need a service contract to use my devices? No, you don't. So um, the only limitation that you have, I mean, obviously, if you don't have a service contract, we're not going to expose contract details because it doesn't exist. Um, the only thing that you are limited on the number of uh, serial numbers that you can import in a given day or add in a day, so it's 100 per day, uh, but you don't have to have a service contract. Um, and if you... Uh, in, if you wanted that ability to see those other pieces of information, the only thing you really need is one device on one contract. So keep ASA 5505 or 5506 service on that, and you're off and running. You've got access to all the, the uh, uh, all the cool features. But again, it's it's not required. Um, the only requirement is you need a Cisco login ID. That's that's it. If you're on the communities, so you've got a Cisco login ID, so you. You're, you've met the minimum requirements at that point. Great. And just one final question. How many devices can I store in my devices? Um, there is. There used to be a limit. At one point in time, there was a limit of 10,000 serial numbers at a given time, uh, but we've removed that limit. Uh, I wanted to point that out because in the, I noticed this when I was putting the presentation together. There's a couple spots in the help guide where it calls out that 10,000 device limit. Ignore that. Um, we, we've got a couple collections where people have over, uh, well over 100,000 devices. So as many devices as you want, um, at, at this point, we, we, haven't, uh, we haven't found a one right That's great. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, David Scott, and thank you very much to everyone who joined to this session. We, we, we are going to close this one. Remember that if you have any further questions or you think about something extra about my devices that you would like to know, we have this forum open um, till next Friday, January the 22nd, and Dave and Scott will be helping us to cover all of your queries. So if you have any further questions, please go ahead. And also remember, if you're looking for, for 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 other events like these, you want to know more about the activities that we have, just have a look to our social media channels. We place all the information just right there. We are available on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and YouTube, and in the application, actually, uh, for all those things, partners and, and customers that are in this session. If you're looking for 40 events, uh, like either support talks or community lives or any additional IT training, 
uh, have a look to everything that we have in the Cisco community, you will be finding like um, not only support talks like this, but also for the training. And well, uh, once again, thank you for your time. Please, uh, once you log off, you will be receiving a survey. Uh, it will come on in a pop-up window. And please help us out to to tell us how we're doing, uh, uh, what do you like about this event, how can we improve, or what kind of topics would you like to see in further events like these support talks as well, uh, so we can deliver them to you. And well, once again, thank you so much, Dave and Scott, and I wish all of you have a great day, a great rest of the week, and thank you so much for joining to these first support talks of this new year 2021, and I wish all of you a great of health, wellness this new year. Thank you, guys. See you next time. Thanks, everyone.